Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a hyper casual game in Unity and welcome to episode 3. In this tutorial we are going to take a little look at lighting as well as a skybox and we'll also touch again on some more physics. And don't forget, click on the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So at the end of last tutorial, we did a little bit more on physics. Um, we've basically got these orbs kind of falling down in uh, kind of some kind of order. Um, so we're going to get back to physics in the second part of this tutorial again, because I feel physics and coding are going to be vital to what we're creating here. Although not necessarily too important, I just think separating them up and switching things around a little bit brings much more knowledge to you quicker rather than focus on one particular thing constantly. So we are going to take a look at something called the Asset Store in this tutorial, and we're going to get from there a skybox to kind of make this background look a little better than just a kind of blue and grey horizon. So to access the Asset Store, we can just hold Control and press 9 on the keyboard, and it will open up that Asset Store window. What is the Asset Store? The Asset Store is a fantastic place that you can go into and find assets that you need for your game or indeed your project. So I have many, many videos on uh, assets in the Asset Store and I'm not going to try and go into much of that. If you want to go and view it, uh, I do have a playlist on my channel that you can kind of have a look through and see if you can find anything you're interested in with some reviews. So in a nutshell, the Asset Store is a contained place that you can get anything, whether it's paid or free providing obviously someone's created it. So all these assets in here have been created by either by Unity themselves or people from all around the world creating anything and just uploading it to the asset store for you to download. So we're looking for something called a skybox because that's what all of this background is. So let's go to our assets uh, search bar and click on skybox as I've searched for it before. You can just type in skybox, hit return, and it will find it. Now, obviously, everything we do on this channel is free. So let's scroll down and let's find pricing and let's change that to free. If you want to pay for assets, that's completely fine. It's, you know, it's, it's entirely up to you whether you want to pay for this or whether you want to do it for free. I would recommend taking a look around and make sure you know what's right for you first. So you can take any of these, really. It, it is 100% up to you what skybox you want to take. Um, I already have a skybox installed from this because obviously I have gone into this and downloaded. Um, what I will say is because we are aiming for mobile devices, your best thing to do is go and look for smaller ones. So for example, this one right here, the Fantasy Skybox Free, this is the one I have taken. And if you go into it, it tells you the file size is 7.3 meg which is pretty decent. I obviously got this quite a while ago. Um, so I have taken this one. Now, just going back to the asset store itself, you could, for example, take this one here. It's a really nice asset, but it is just under 300 megabytes, which just feels a bit unnecessary due to what we're creating here. So once you've found the asset you want, so we'll go with this one, all you need to do is click on import or download here and all that will do is firstly it will download it make sure you do have a unity account to make sure you are logged in it will download it first of all then when you press it again when it says import it will bring up a little window for you to import everything into your project and i'm going to head back to my scene view here and you can see here i do already have it installed in my project so how do we get that now into our scene? How do we make our scene look really, really nice? Well, all we need to do is let's check what it's called, i.e. if we go in and then we look for, if we can actually find it, uh, let's look for the actual, there it is. It helps if we look in the right folder. So Fancy Skybox Free, that's what it was called, wasn't it? So if we go into the materials folder, you can see these are the skybox materials that we have. We have Night 01A, Night 01B, Sunny 01A, and Sunny 01B. So let's choose one of these to place into our scene. And to do that, we need to go to Window at the top, and then we need to go to Rendering, and then go to Lighting Settings. And the first thing you'll see at the very top of that window is Skybox Material. 
So let's click the little button next to it and we can then select whatever we want to have as a skybox. Now obviously you're not restricted to just having a skybox uh, that you've downloaded from the asset store. You can have anything at all. For example, any material within your uh, project file can be used. For example, we've just chosen that blue material there and that doesn't look exactly fantastic. You could still use it if you wanted to. So I like the look of Knight 01B. So I'm going to choose that one. Yeah, we'll go with B because why not? I guess you can go with Sunny if you wanted to, but I'm going to go with Knight 01B. So I'm going to close the X. Uh, so that's gone. And I'm going to do the same with this. There are a couple more settings on here, which we may go through at some point later on. But for now, it doesn't matter too much as long as we have the background here. So if we press play now, we should see everything in action with, yeah, with that skybox. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is some lighting. Now over here in the hierarchy, uh, I think in the very first tutorial, we touched upon this directional light being an object within the hierarchy and inside the scene. And you can see it down there. Now, there are a couple of different types of lighting. The main three that you would ever really use is something called directional. The other is called point. And the other is, if we go to type, we should be able to see it, is a, a spot. Now, you can use area, but I kind of feel there's no point to it, especially in this style, because we can use directional. Now, a spotlight is exactly that. It points to a spot. And now we've selected that, you can see that these have gone dim. We can't really see them because the light here is shining and it's only being displayed within this area here. That's how a spotlight works. The next one we have is point light. And if I zoom out, you can see the area in which this point light is only lighting up. So to make this larger, we could just increase the range from, let's say, 10 to 100. And you can see that it is now affecting this section of our orbs. So just make sure you, you understand the fact that point light is from radiated from a point outwards and is only within there. We can change our intensity quite a lot if we want to. Depends how bright you want things to be. And finally, the original one that it was on is directional and directional will light up an entire scene. Now, the difference between this and the others is that, for example, if we change this, you can see just by changing the rotation on the X, where the light shines and reflects on our orbs within the scene. Now it's not really that visible in such a small scene, so I don't think it's going to matter too much, but when we increase the intensity, you can see just how much that does have an impact. So your best thing to do at this point is to figure out what you want to have as the lighting. Do you want the nice lighting to be what it is now, or do you want to work with it a little bit more? So say perhaps play around with that let's have that about there and let's change that to about there and let's press play and see what that looks like okay that's not too bad so play around with the lighting and you get it to how you want it to be you can obviously change the color as well if you want have it a bright white or you could have it as black which would be a bit silly but you could have say a red tint to it which I suppose there's no point in this style of game. But again, if you want it to be that way, you can. Now, going back to window and going back to rendering and lighting settings, you can also change the intensity multiplier of the light here. Again, I don't think there's too much point to a lot of this in this style of game. Obviously, if you're creating a big expansive open world, that's where it becomes much more relevant. So work with those settings to get the lighting how you want it to be. So let's head back to some physics now. So obviously we know these balls will just, or orbs I should say, will just fall. And if we look down, they will just fall infinitely. So what happens if we want to, let's say, stop them somewhere here? Well, to do that, all we can do is let's add in a cube down here to act as some kind of platform. So let's go to game object, 3D object and cube. You can see the cube right there. So let's set this position to 0, 0, 0, get it dead center of our scene again. And let's align it so as we can catch these orbs. Now, logically, if we press play now, this will impact the red one, I think. 
Ah, it will impact the green one. Perfect. So we've had our desired effect here. This cube has now stopped this orb from falling, which is exactly what we want. So what I want to do and what I want to try and create is here in the game view, I want to have uh, a cube here, a cube here, and a cube here. So we've got three cubes to try and catch these falling orbs. So whenever they fall, we've got to try and catch it here, here, or here. And obviously we add a score. So in order to do that, what we need to do is play around with this cube material. Well, I say material, we don't really need a material on it just yet, but we might add one on. So let's move its position to somewhere here. And let's compress it down to act more like a kind of a platform. So let's shrink it on the Y axis 2.25. And let's probably duplicate it. Let's duplicate it and see how we can fit it along here in the window. So hold control, press D. And remember, I'm using my snap settings here. And once more, there we go. So we have three catchments. Now if we press play we should hopefully see all three being caught. Excellent. So I think the best thing for us to do now is line everything up. So we only have three falling or possible falling uh, columns it would be and this red one is off center so it kind of needs to move here a little bit more. So let's take the red one and just move it inwards. Now what I'd like to do is make these a little bit more catchy rather than just a platform that appears. You don't necessarily have to do this. Um, it's not really going to affect the gameplay at all. I think it's more about presentation. So for example, we could say cube. Let's duplicate the original cube we have, which is this very first one we created. Let's increase the scale to, let's say, 0.5. And let's move it into another position with the scale on the X, which is across as 0.25. And let's move it to there and shift it up to about there. Duplicate again and bring that to about there. So now it looks like we've got a little catchment platform. So I'm going to do the same with those two and same as such. So if I press play now, we should be able to see them being caught. Perfect. So I'm happy with how that's looking. So the last thing we're going to do here is we are actually going to combine a couple of these together. So I'm going to rename that first cube as something sensible. So let's call it right platform. Now what we want to do with the right platform is put these two arms in the same game object. And what I mean by that is if we take this right one here, rename this to right, right, which means it's the right um, platform, the right arm, so right, right, that will go into the right platform. So all I've done there is drag and drop that game object inside that platform. Now what this will do is it will couple these two objects together. So, for example, if I take this middle platform here and I click this little tick up here, it will make it disappear. Now, that means that that object is no longer going to be rendered. It still exists, but it won't be usable or visible in the game until we write a script. So, let's turn that back on by ticking it. So, if we now go to that right platform and press the same tick, it will make both the right arm and the platform disappear. That's because they are both coupled together. So let's take that and turn it back on. So next, let's go to cube four, which is the left arm of the right. So let's say right, left. Now I know this may seem a little bit crazy right now, but it's worth noting that these aren't really going to be too relevant after this tutorial. They're only there for visualization. So what I'm going to do is move that into right platform as well. And then I'm going to click that little arrow there so it closes up that right platform. So that whole thing there is now one object. So we can turn that on, turn it off easily just by ticking that little arrow, uh, the little box at the top. 
So next we have cube one, which is middle platform. So that means that cube five is going to be middle right and cube six is going to be middle left. So I'm holding control and I'm pressing both of those. So now they are both selected and we can drag and drop both of them at the same time onto that middle platform and then close it up. Middle platform is now one whole object. Finally, cube two left platform which means left right and cube eight is left left and again i know it seems a little bit odd but remember after this we're not really going to be using these so the final thing to do is to turn off any collider in those arms the reason we do that is because we want the main collider to still be that bottom platform that bottom platform is probably what we're going to use as the main catchment for all of these orbs so let's select each one of those by holding control and clicking on them and then turning off box collider when we do you'll notice the green outline will fade a little bit that means that that collider is no longer active. What I mean by that is it will no longer work if something collides with it. So I'll give a quick example now. This will catch all three. Perfect. But you can see that the orbs go through there just a little bit. So if I do the same with, let's say, this right platform and turn off the box collider, it will turn off the collider on this bottom section as well, which means it will go right through. Now, that will come in handy for us at some point, but for now, I don't think it's really quite so necessary. So I'm just gonna save my scene there as it is. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to work on some uh, UI. Uh, people know it as GUI or a hood or anything like that, but basically what it means is some on-screen visualization, i.e. like a score, that kind of thing. And we're also going to start looking at some C-sharp coding. Now, don't get too worried about the C-sharp coding. If you are new to programming, it won't be that difficult, and I will guide you through step by step. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.